But today, uh, we want to raise uh, new voices, bring new voices to the stage. There has been a lot of talk about how, who ha owns the stage and who is on it. And today, we invite a new panel uh, to give us the input, both on quality and on art, and on inclusion on, in the cultural scene. We are really happy to invite Hanna Vosene Kwam, who is uh, a counselor at Akshus Filkis Kommune, to host the panel. Please welcome, and you can in invite the rest of the people. Yes, hello, everybody. There was a young girl in the US. She was dark as the night, beautiful. But the world started to tell her that she was too dark. She wasn't beautiful at all. She wouldn't get any jobs because her skin was too dark. She was 14 years old and she tried to rub it off. She tried to wash it off to get lighter. And that didn't happen, of course. Then she went to her mom and she said, Mom, what am I going to do? Everybody's telling me I'm ugly. What am, am I going to do with my skin? And she said, don't let anybody define you. Find a solution on this problem. I will help you. And then she said, Mom, yeah, I want to do that. I want to make a clothing line. OK, what do you want to call it? I want to call it flexing in my complexion. I bought the t-shirt. <laughs> and I'm wearing it today as a statement. And I'm wearing it today because this lovely panel here is going to flex in their complexion. And it's about time. <laughs> we have a lovely panel here of uh, dancers, of choreographers, of visual artists, a DJ in the corner there. And I want to ask you, Belinda Brasa, choreographer, dancer, and you work at the, one of the main institutions in Norway, a theater institution called the Norske Teatre. And on whose shoulder do you stand looking up on who you are today as an artist? Uh, it's going to start very cliche, but yeah, my parents were the ones who introduced me to, to art, music, song, dance at a very early age. Um, and telling me that anything is possible and pushing me to pursue any goal or dream I had. Later on, I met hip hop um, and something fell into place because in hip hop, what I found is uh, there it's such a colorful um, culture and uh, it's, you celebrate uh, your unique skill and your uh, individualism, uh, and then to use that skill and individualism loud, clearly, and unapologetically. So when I got those tools, uh, I kind of uh, found myself, or who I wanted to be as an uh, artist, and what kind of influence and work I wanted to do with theater or dance. Beautiful. Dinos. You are on the home turf here in Sweden. Yeah. You're a dancer and choreographer, and you educated at the Kungli Opera. Uh, on whose shoulder do you stand? Um, I stand on my own shoulders, basically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. I don't yeah. stand on anybody else's shoulders. I've had great support from home, um, but yeah. My, I come from a... Um, yeah, a small minority of, 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 of people who are not exposed to arts from the beginning in our society. I come from what we call a no-go zone in Norrköping. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so basically I found my own interest and, and made my own way and ended up at the Royal Swedish Ballet in the end. Beautiful. Julianne Dock, are you from uh, Denmark? Yes. And uh, you're a dancer and choreographer as well. Yeah. On whose shoulder do you stand? Um, Okay, so first of all, I, I live in Denmark, but I'm from, from France. Yep. Um, and I was born in the Republic of Central Africa. Yes. Um, so I started dancing when I was six uh, with ballet and then jazz. And um, I was told or made to understand that maybe ballet was not for me because... Okay, okay, so then I found hip-hop 
when I moved to Paris, and that was a revelation. Um, loved it, felt it, um, but for me, definitely a revelation was when I saw Alvin Ailey, and to me that was that, okay, so they're black, and they're strong, graceful, technical, um, powerful, so to me it's, oh, so it's, po it's possible, you know, so that was really a great revelation, and that really helped me with my confidence. Uh, I will also actually mention uh, Zama Bungu, whom uh, Tom, uh, Thomas also quoted, um, who is in Montreal, and she um, was also great to train with her and her special technique, because what she made me realize uh, was that, um, for example, African dance, dances are also technical, mm. which is something that is not said often, or rarely actually that there is technique in African dance, there is technique in other kinds of dance, there is technique in Bharatanyatam, there is technique in Sabar, there is technique in Katak. Mm -hmm. It's not just ballet and contemporary and jazz that have technique. So this no, is important, right? When you have my skin color and you also do African dance, to know, hey, this is also technical, this is also complex. Mm -hmm. So I would definitely have to name her. And then others, you know, I have trained with, um, Rosangela Silvestre in Brazil, um, Germaine Aconi in Senegal, um, yeah, many others. International. Oh International, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, and Sandra Mujinga, you're living in Norway and Malmö, educated from the Fine Arts Academy in Malmö. On whose shoulder do you stand? Um, I would say my mom. Um, she was a fashion designer. And I think as a kid, it's like interesting because skills has been mentioned here. I was quite good at like drawing, so it was like this specific thing that I could do and it could not be ignored somehow. And then, so I just continued drawing and because she was a fashion designer, she would encourage me to be like, continue, do it and show off my drawings and so on. And uh, later on, I would also think that especially after watching Lion King, <laughs> that I could like use the uh, drawings to like create something more, that it could be bigger than something that's just pure two-dimensional. Um, but then later on, I would say like the internet, even though you're thinking of like the backsides of it, it's quite, it has been so helpful for me because it has created like platforms and groups where I can meet in particularly many other black women who are creative in creative fields, and then, which has been quite encouraging. So in that sense, also obviously later on when I've had the time and opportunity to also create my own like bibli a bibliography or like just having an archive of books of writers that are supporting me, like for instance, Audre Lorde. For instance. Yeah, we had uh, quite a lot of uh, people talking here today and a lot of white people talking about the white norm. Um, but you had an um, uh, exhibition last year called uh, Clear as Day, where one of the critics said it's like she's making black the new white. Explain. Yeah. Uh, I think whiteness is always like remains as the norm. So generally white people don't think about being white until like recently when we are actually discussing like diversity and being more inclusive and so on. And so what I do is basically when I am working with like models and performers is that I insist on like casting people that are black also because that it is a very white art scene in Oslo. And uh, while casting, they also like invite their family members, also invite their friends. And just like casting one person could like actually change the space in itself. So I think like, and what is also important within creating these spaces is that it is what it's what happens before, or like you realize that there are so many like thoughts and ideas that are shared among people of color, but there aren't like so many like specific or visible spaces that you can access and discuss these things. And so I try to create like that type of platform also with my work. Hmm. Uh, Ninos, um, today I said to you that I feel so comfortable when I come to Sweden because I feel that I'm represented here. When I see the billboards, I see myself. When I look at the Stadstheater, I see billboards with people of all shapes and sizes and colors. And you looked at me as if I came from a different planet. You did not agree. 
Um, no, I did not. Um, <laughs> so, um, yeah, I've been working abroad as a professional dancer for six years. I've been three years in, in the Netherlands, in Copenhagen, in Switzerland, in, in the States, etc. before coming back uh, to Sweden. And actually, I had this sick fascination of Stockholm and Sweden being this um, very open-minded and very uh, multicultural city and the art scene especially because that's what I was taught at the ballet school here. Um, coming back, I was faced with like, yeah, I don't know, I felt like an elephant hit me right in the face um, because that was clearly not the situation. I'm very happy you feel that way yeah, yeah. because maybe <laughs> I've been staring myself blind on it. Um, however, I... Um, there's a, sm a small minority of re representation happening on our stages, yes. But um, as we could see today, this is the first panel that includes people of color. We're um, the last one on the agenda, and half of the decision makers have already left the room. Um, and I think that says something about it, you know? Um, so yeah, you might be, you know, we might be represent. <laughs> We might be on a poster or two, uh, whether it's H&M or not, um, um, you know, but if you go and watch uh, performing arts in Stockholm, you will not feel represented. At least I'm not feeling represented. Mm. Um, so, um, yeah. We talked a very rough inside here, and I asked you what you have done with, with the, you know, your group of people to change things and within the framework of the institution, mm. and then you just said... I couldn't take it anymore, I quit. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's, a, it's a backlash in my career somehow to constantly face um, normalized racism, mm -hmm. um, you know, where people intentionally or unintentionally are, are calling me out because of my ethnicity or because of the way I look. Uh, I've been doing auditions for some of the biggest institutions in Sweden um, where I've been, um, you know, told that I was too dark for a typecast that was not even, um, you know, it was not even there, you know. Um, so yeah, it's a backlash in my career, so I decided to quit to stay on these institutions in Sweden. Uh, the Royal Swedish Opera, it's probably our, our biggest institution. It was one of my main goals as a dancer, and, and when I started dancing, it was my dream. I'm very happy for given the chance to, to dance there. Um, at the same time as I felt very restricted because of the way I look. Um, and the reason why I, I told you that I, I did not agree with you is because nowhere where I've danced before, and I've been on the main stages of many opera houses around the world, have I ever been looked at um, because of my ethnicity. That has never happened to me until I came back to Sweden. And, and, and that's why I couldn't agree with you. Um, you know, in the Netherlands, nobody ever asked me um, why I'm Swedish or, or how, how do you claim that you're Swedish? People were just like, Oh wow, that's cool, great, you guys are so ahead, you know? I was like, yeah, we are, and I was promoting Sweden as that, and I still do, because we are in many ways. Um, but, but yeah, it, it just it gave me a backlash in my career and I had to quit. Hmm. Uh, Belinda, 20 years ago, I was one of the artists going to the theater that you work at, trying to um, do something, trying to say that people of color are here, we want to do things, and they said no, they said we didn't have black people when Ibsen was alive, we don't know how to fit you into these scenes, and all those things. But now, 20 years later, you are there, and you are doing great work, and I feel as if you're getting the space and the room to do what you want to do. What happened along the way? <laughs> uh, fortunately, uh, we're moving forward. We're moving forward. I have to say, the Norwegian theater is the only theater that uses New Norsk, uh, New Norwegian, as uh, the language for everything we do there. Um, so what the Norwegian uh, theater has done is we have started a um, three-year educational program for uh, actors with a non-Western background. Uh, out of 105 actors that are employed at uh, our house, uh, 25 of them are with a non-Western background. Um, uh, they gave me a lot of responsibility. I'm programming one of the stages there, opening up the house. I programmed Kamara, I had in Thomas, uh, you know, just forwarding the, the, what I feel is the fire and the backbone of the Norwegian theater, the Norwegian. Um, was it easy? Was it like... Yes, yeah. actually for me it was easy, but I think 
I mean, I, I don't uh, necessarily um, have the same view on, on um, my color or uh, as a minority. I felt like a superhero coming in with special powers and uh, that I could save uh, them. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, fortunately, I was also welcomed uh, uh, like that uh, because I asked my boss, Eric Uxby, uh, okay, so you're going to give me a lot of money and I'm going to program this stage. Okay, cool. Uh, so what do you want me to do? And then he just looked at me and he said, um, you know much better than all of us in this theater what this theater needs. So with maybe with him, maybe with time, maybe with the fact that, I mean, because you guys did a lot with Queendom uh, in Norway and, you know, with, with all of us, with these small little, uh, you know, um, Screams uh, victories <laughs> that we've, we've uh, been working hard, uh, um, finally, it was, it was an open room. Mm -hmm. So then it's very important for me to, to forward that uh, and open it continuing um, and, and making theater more um, uh, a home for the new Norwegian. Let all the different cultures come in there as a superpower and just mm. be enriched. I mean, I am half Norwegian and half Filipino. So for me, I, don't, I, can't, I can't put myself in the whatever, you know, like, am I white or am I not? Because mm. I feel both. And I feel that that's a super strength. And I love the colors, and, and that's where I come from the hip-hop environment with the, with the fact that we don't need any color coordination. It's just, you know, you and your skill, and that's your superpower, and that's what you work with. Mm. But if I should be a bitty, bitty, bit critical, mm. uh, do we need a special school for black people that white people decide that if they go through our school for three years, they're okay? But if they've gone to Nordic Black Theatre that existed for 20 years or already have their education from other places, it's not good enough. Um, I wouldn't say that uh, Nordic Black isn't a good enough school, definitely not. There's a lot of uh, really, really good talents coming out of that school. So uh, I think this is just a uh, supplement. Yep. It's just, a, it's just mm -hmm. another... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and it, the, it, the education is different. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's no quality is better than the other. It's just we need all, you know, all amount of pump, yeah. uh, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, make them coming because uh, we've seen all these boring numbers the whole day that, uh, you know, we are still too few. We are yeah. still, you yeah. know, it's all in the negatives and blah, 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 blah. And we're talking about, you know, it's going to take a lot of time. Yo, I'm almost 40 and I want it to happen in my lifetime. Mm. And also, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and also, you know, we're talking about the future and, and we can't change it, everything. No, it, that's mm. not the fact. We've been working constantly. You know, just the fact that you're here, we are sitting here next to each other and, and, you know, all your careers and everything says something about that we've been working. We're doing this all the time. And uh, the future is now. We can't wait anymore. We need action. And don't mm. sit here and have these panels in 1995, 98, 2008. Mm. And then again and again and again. Do it now. Yes. <laughs> um, Julian. Julian, there's yes. uh, one of them in the anthology, there's an author calling her piece, is something rotten going on in the state of Denmark? Mm -hmm. Do you feel that there's something rotten going on in the state of Denmark? Um, okay, so my personal experience, um, <laughs> yes, when I moved to Denmark, well, that was something different. Uh, different. Um, let's say that I'm going to just say like two experiences that I had. So I was teaching um, African, African, African contemporary dance uh, in an education program, one-year education program for professional or wannabe professional um, students. And so they, I taught them a choreography, um, which was contemporary African. And they had to present it for their Christmas show in front of the parents and friends. and. Um, and when you teach that kind of vocabulary, which is not um, very common, mm. you know, uh, in that kind of education program, you have to be strategic. So I wanted them to be to have simple costumes. Which I, I told them, okay, black. You just wear black because I want people to see the quality of the movements. Okay, then they're probably not used to seeing that, but I want them to see that. You know, so. Great. 
Then the day of the show, I was in the audience, and then the students came dressed differently. They came with a raffia skirt, and then um, like a mask that was like a white cardboard with like big red lips, like drawn, and with like curly wavy hair, grossly, you know, drawn, like going up like that. So it was like, it was a shock to me. It was a joke. Um, and of course, the reaction of the audience was, they laughed. They laughed, you know, they're like, haha, they found it funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's funny. Raffia skirts and then like a, uh, like a mask, grotesque mask. So my work, you know, I taught them like a technique, etc., a meaning, etc. And then, so my, my work was uh, reduced to like a parody, not even parody, I mean, just. Mm -hmm. that, so it was so insulting, of course. Mm -hmm. I was so mad. I went to confront the director of the school, and I asked her, hey, why did you take the decision to actually give them those costumes that are ridiculous and insulting? Mm. Oh, well, it's not me, it's the students. Uh, they, they felt that uh, there was something missing. They needed something else to express themselves in that, in that choreography. But why? And why didn't you call me to ask me, hey, as the choreographer of the piece, is it okay if? That's the you know, courtesy, basic courtesy. No, they just went ahead and just interpreted what I gave, the material I gave them without talking to me. So that was uh, like a slap in the face, you know. Um, number two of the experience last year, I was in a production and we performed at, at Danse Halerne, which is like Danse Suisse. And then I had a solo in that piece and um, one of the critic, critics um, started a critic of my, my performance. Uh, the highlight, uh, one highlight of the piece is uh, Julien Doko's uh, solo. Um, she's, um, she performs with great um, um, precision and uh, energy. Uh, da, da, da. And, then, and then she moves in a way that makes, you can see the lion moving in the savannah. <laughs> what? So there is something rotten going on. <laughs> there is something rotten going on. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Sandra, um, when I called you about this panel and I mentioned diversity, inclusion, bloody, 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 blah, you said, oh, I think about these things almost every day. What did you mean by that? Uh, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, representation is important because it affects like our imagination, it affects our fantasies, and it affects our ambitions. And I think that beyond this, obviously now there's also this critique of maybe like a shallow representational politics because what we can see now is like, um, I was actually like joking uh, with my friend who's like from Atlanta and she talked about like since um, Mr. Agent Orange is a president, president, president of the United States of America, that we can actually just like, as a person of color, you can just like cash in as much as possible on like white guilt. <laughs> Cause like, he's like <laughs> literally like this drunk uncle that just like got so much power. And then everyone is like, all the white people are trying to hide him. Like, cause like, oh my God, racism exists and so on. <laughs> but then like, but the, my main point is like beyond this sort of like shallow representational politics, which is happening now because it's also really cool. It's like hashtag diversity and so on. And then you can like, and what happens then like just pushing like a person of color in front of an ad. Like I have to be like really careful of like how my works are also used, you know, like sometimes uh, I mean, most times I, um, um, someone could ask me for permission and then I appreciate that and then I'll see what kind of context it is. But I could also experience like my works like being like presented as a commercial almost like uh, put in like, hey, we care about these issues. And, but at the same time, it's being used as a way to silence like people of color because what you will realize in the end is that maybe the rules, like it's not enough like getting into a space. Like for instance, if we're thinking about like having more students that are 
um, yeah, more POC students, like in art academies, you have to maybe think that maybe when they access the space, the space was not made for them in the first place. So maybe you have to start thinking about the cur curriculum, you have to think about the professors, you have to think about what have you been teaching in the first place. So it's not only about like, hey, we made it, we accessed this space, you have to like also think about the foundation or why the ex it was, you were excluded in the first place. So that's why I'm thinking like, me constantly being maybe like, again and again, like I could be at a fancy art dinner uh, somewhere in Berlin and then I'm the only black person there and then the next the person sitting next to me will be like, how is it in Africa? <laughs> <laughs> like, I become almost like the first black person this person has talked to, I realize. So how does that kind of like engage empathy? How does that like affect, like how can this space like grow if m so many people in the space barely talk to any black people, you know? So yeah, it's yeah. like, uh, yeah, of course I think about these things again. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, Ninos, there are not a lot of policymakers left, but there are a few. <laughs> there are a few. Uh, and uh, what would you tell them on what initiatives the future needs to make an inclusive cultural environment? Not only in Sweden, but if you can look at like the Nordic countries since we're in that atmosphere today. That's a very difficult question because yeah. if I would have had the answer, I would probably be a decision maker by now. Yes! Uh, but I am not. <laughs> yeah. Um, Maybe so that's your answer. <laughs> so I think the, the, main, the main thing is that um, the Nordic countries in general, we've come so far with gender equality and that's a great achievement in history. And we should still keep on fighting for that. Um, we should never put that on the side. However, mm. we need to move forward and by, me, by saying moving forward, I don't mean moving on from something, but moving forward from something. And that we need to do together. And by doing that, I mean that decision makers need to evaluate where their money, where the taxpayers' money are going inside of our institutions. Um, our cultural minister, um, Alice Ba, was talking about um, this whole uh, artistic freedom, you know. Um, for me, artistic freedom does not mean that you can take any freedom you want uh, with taxpayers' money. That is not artistic freedom. And artistic freedom should also not be something you can hide behind mm. to create your own art that is not inclusive, you know? That is not artistic freedom, that is ignorance. And that's a very big difference, mm. you know? <laughs> but since you said that you would be the decision maker, where is your dream place to work mm. and to be uh, in power and make an impact? Um, Let's, let's aim high, I'm the next Alice Ball. Uh, <laughs> 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 Why not? Jo Why not? I Why mean, not? Jo jokes aside, I think, um, as I said, we need to dig deeper, you know? We need to give everybody in our society the same opportunities. We need to look into why the socioeconomical segregation is actually one of the biggest uh, facts why this is happening today. Because I come from a no-go zone, I was not exposed to fine arts in any way in the, yeah, in the community where I grew up, but I made it because I decided to make it, you know? I was not given any tools in school, I was not given any information about that. I had to find it on my own. I did not see myself being represented at the institutions. Frankly, I was not even invited to be at the institutions when I was in school. If we were to be uh, exposed to fine arts, it would be some kind of hip hop event, it would be some kind of fusionized whatever AKA colonized version of arts. Uh, and, and for me, that is more important. We need to look into the, the, the main issue and that is socioeconomical segregation. And we need to work from there. We, need to, we cannot close down cultural schools. We cannot close down youth centers in the suburbs because mm. these are so crucial, so, so crucial for our youth in the country to actually get a fair chance like everybody else, you know? Mm. I, I stand here only because of the community I come from, because they've backed me up. Mm. Nobody else, you know? Yeah. Belinda, you meet a lot of kids, a lot of youths uh, when, during your work. And what do they tell you? What, how do they see their future in, in the cultural field? Do they feel as if they can, when they see you, they can go in and do the things that you are doing? Or do they you divide themselves from, from the institutions and from the cultural field? 
uh, unfortunately dividing still. Um, and I think uh, it's something about, you know, um, uh, exposing children at a very young age to, because we have a government, great government in uh, Norway, that is all the time like cutting uh, the funding and taking away all the art subjects mm -hmm. in schools, replacing them with, you know, numbers and stuff. Uh, that are also important, but you know, le uh, less and less focus on the soft skills like uh, empathy and human relation and just uh, being able to express your uh, feelings, which is what the basic of any human society, maybe even the basics of art. And without that, without being able to 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 channel or uh, you know expressing and just seeing numbers or whatever. The, how are they even supposed to be able to dream? And when you meet, um, uh, you know, an attitude that art isn't really important. What we're doing here today is really important. Can save lives. Can, can you know, influence in politics and and mm. and you know, change uh, society and, and so on and so forth. Mm, that kind of uh, attitude uh, towards art. It's something we need to to feed them at a very early age, and and then they will. You know, they will see the possibilities. They will see themselves as a theater uh, boss or wherever mm. they want to be because it, they are doing important job and they have that respect for art. Because art is, you know, I see myself as a, a I want to build bridges. Bridges and, and just pulling contrasts and, and diversity together. Like, um, uh, art is this bridge, you know? It's, it's, and it's supposed to be this bridge. It's supposed to be... We, ha we have to have these meetings, unfortunately, where, you know, nobody has ta ever had a real conversation to anyone with an African background or, you know, they look at me and mm. like, who is this little Chinese person, you know? We have to have these <laughs> meetings <laughs> still so, so we can, uh, you know, be able to, mm. to, to do that, have that impact. And I think with these bridges at a very young age to these children will make... Uh, like you said, you had you didn't get exposed to anything, mm. and it's, it, this is like the biggest hole in society. Mm. And who's in charge of that? Is it the cultural politics? Is it the institutions themselves? Who's in charge? It's a of circle. Yeah. It's, it's a, a circle. circle. You okay. know, if our art schools are white, the institutions mm. will be white. If mm. the institutions are white, our cultural schools will be white because people of color will not feel represented and will not think that's a reality they can achieve. Mm. Mm. But would you, know? you would you like the the um, uh, cultural politicians to say uh, within 2020 there should be 50 percent with a diverse background in this and this and this institution? Should we go that far? I would say no. I just want a fair representation of how our society looks like. Mm. I don't need an extra representation of people of color mm. or uh, you know either or I just mm. if you if we have an art scene uh, uh, especially as at the governmental institutions if we have an art scene that is representing our society meaning also uh, foreign backgrounds within people coming from Africa Latin America and Asia mm. because right now they are actually underrepresented especially in Sweden uh, within these people with foreign backgrounds you know mm. we're underrepresented already there so if you have a fair representation of of ethnicities that actually mirrors our society today, I would be happy. That's all, mm. you know, like we don't need much more. That, mm. that's, we, would, we would feel equal because we would look equal, you know. Mm. Uh, our time is up, I think, but could, no? Let's continue, it's fine, <laughs> we're doing it. We're <laughs> taking this conference. Talk but a I bit just, more. Yeah, I, I just want to let you all say a few words about how you perceive this day. Uh, what are your, for those who, who were here the whole day, for those who just came, what, what do you feel? How is the atmosphere? How do you feel that this, where is this going, kind of, Belinda? <laughs> yeah. uh, Be honest, it's, it's about honesty, I mean. Yeah, I, I was uh, frustrated a little bit because we're talking about diver diversity and I don't see that, uh, I don't see who we're talking about necessarily in this room i don't i don't see them represented here and i think it's sad because it's like i don't know it's 15 time we do stuff like this and it's it's still this gap mm. and and um 
and uh, that's just frustrating. And, 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 but in the same time, you know, it, it's a kick in the ass about, I want to go out there and just continue working, yeah. continue with this bridge building and, and refusing to, 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 to be just a number or, mm. or anything like that. And mm. just, um, uh, so maybe next time we'll meet, there'll be... You'll be the cultural Real minister, dev. you'll be the <laughs> minister of something. <laughs> yeah, Ninos? Um, I think I shared the same kind of experience as Belinda. I felt a bit frustrated waiting for the uh, representation to happen on stage, and it didn't until the dancing came on, you know, uh, which also t says a lot, uh, I think. Um, also, I'm a bit frustrated with, you know, where the last panel were, as I said before, four people, five people um, of diversity where the last ones in the program were put in the end. I feel like this could be something that we could have discussed with all of us together also, you know, like people asking questions perhaps or, or whatever. Um, because these are our personal experiences. People in the audience might experience this differently and which they're completely allowed to, you know, it's, it's all legit in the end of the day. Mm. Um, but yeah, a, a, I mean, I'm also very happy to be here to, to raise my voice, you know, I'm a nobody. So, in the end of the day, it, it, it's a great platform for us to also make people aware of, of, of our issues that we're facing daily in our professions. Uh, and you're sitting there taking these decisions and actually taking these decisions, deciding who is deciding our future. And our future is, is it's decently flat, as we could have seen the whole day today. Julian? Um, so, I'm really happy to be here. Um, Somehow I represent Denmark and their <laughs> artists. Yeah. <laughs> I live in Denmark, yes. I've had experiences in Denmark, but um, so I'm glad to be here and represent Denmark because really, like, with what I've been through, I can, s yeah, it's good to be here. But I want to say that um, for me, based on all of my experiences, also from abroad, like, there is really a need to decolonize the minds because that's why we have this today, like there's a concern, but that's why also we are here now at this time, you know. Um, that's why um, there's like some weird critiques of work. That's why there is some um, hierarchy of, of arts, you know, art styles, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, I think we need to go back to, you know, decolonizing the mind. Thank you. For sure. Sandra? Yeah. Just sorry, and exposure. Yeah. Exposure, yes. exposure, yeah. exposure, yes. I mean, yeah. really. Uh, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Uh, at the same time, I think just like a comment and also in regards to like building bridges or like just, it's so important, I think, to also think of like power positions and power relations that there are no neutral positions. And that is so important that like when we are creating this sort of spaces while we are having discussions um, that it's important to like be aware of like how there's this constant like performance or relation to whiteness. So it's always like, I think there has to be like parallel discourse, right? So I think that has to be like, an there has to be those who could be like, you know what, this and this is difficult and da 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 da. And I think it's also important though that as a person of color, if you are exhausted or if you cannot really like, the, that you should not have to like continuously have to like explain things again and again. And it, for things that are quite obvious for you, but then because you're a minority, you have to like do all, all this emotional labor. So I think that's important. Like as someone who is privileged, it's your responsibility actually like to make an effort and make it more diverse too. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Belinda, Ninos, Julian, and Sandra. And I would recommend all of you to Google these people. They're great artists. You can talk to them, use them, get them to come around the Nordic countries and work. <laughs> yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Together. I think, uh, I think we want a picture. picture. Oh.